immediately ganked. Alright. But yeah, we got this. We got this. <laughs> I just did the same thing. I keep walking right into them. Weird. Like it's don't, don't, like don't, don't, don't right. even worry about it. Look, I I'm left-handed. That's my blame. That's what I'm gonna blame for this trap state. Okay, we're not going this way. We're gonna go the other way. We have two viable routes to get to there, so um, I am uh, fairly. Uh, Okay, that that is not as embarrassing, but it's still pretty embarrassing. You didn't see shit. <laughs> I did not just turn directly face on, into it and walk directly into it. That isn't what happened on the last reload, because I then immediately walked too close to a Minotaur and got pulled out. This was two reloads ago. <laughs> oh, yep, you know. Oh darn. Oh darn, stream, you know, stream disconnected temporarily. Stream comes back up, we're in the corner, all nice, safe, and sound. Whoops. Whoops, cat knocked over the router. Do I have a cat? No. Does that matter? No. <laughs> My neighbor's kid broke into the house. <laughs> and knocked over the router. Yeah, I feel like it's pretty common if, you're, especially if you're like doing like house tours and stuff like that. Like I do, like a mixture where I will. Um, most of the stuff that I listen to is mostly just a person talking. Um, though, you know, I, I do watch stuff like. Um, uh, I, I watch Small Ant occasionally. I watch the vods for Small Ant. It makes just like. Silly like Mario and Finger videos, so it's like a speedrunner. Um, and oftentimes, with that kind of stuff, I want to be like looking more. But for like for several of the people that I watch, I'm oftentimes just like doing housework. So ninety percent of what I'm doing is listening, and then I might occasionally like glance at my phone. Yeah, I, th the thing is that I do I do both. I switch back and forth while I'm watching a thing, where when I'm at my computer doing something at my computer, I'll I'll put it on the computer and then I'll just move the timestamp up to because I, I don't watch anything live pretty much. Um, I'll move the timestamp up uh, to the appropriate portion of the VOD when I am uh, switching between the two devices. So, if we had a better, I think the one thing that we probably, this is, these are really tough, actually. These hit hard, actually. I think that it makes it depend it depends on a lot of factors how useful a phone is. Uh public transport is like pretty much the way that I'm getting around places. So like in a pla in a place where you're spending a good portion of your day on a train, I feel like there's a very strong bias toward a lot more usage of uh of cell phones. Uh, be just as a result of that, 
I, mo- I mostly just use my phone to uh, either listen to stuff that I would be listening to on my computer or uh, read books. Because there's a Kindle app, so I just I, I read my books. It's very, very convenient to be able to, like, um, have, like, this tiny device that has all the books that you want. Um, like, especially for, like, really long flights in particular. Like, if you're reading a book and you're getting on public transport, you can bring the book. Like, that's not... That's not complicated. You can bring a book, right? But if you're getting onto a 30-hour, you know, plane trip, um, you're not reading a book in a 30-hour plane trip. You're reading several books, and also you have a bunch of luggage that you have weight limits on. Um, and also, very convenient, um... If no match for me. if you're in bed reading a book and your wife turns the lights out, um, it's nice if the, the book comes with its own backlight. <laughs> uh, for the most part, I agree. Uh, I don't. I don't really enjoy um, most phone games. There's a couple of phone games that I think were pretty well designed. I, I think that the uh, the AFK series, so that, the, the two that I played are the AFK Arena and the AFK Journey. I think that the, both of them are fairly well designed games, um, like as like as a sort of nerd for a very particular type of strategy game that doesn't really exist much anymore. Um, it's kind of fun. This sort of like party based like. Um, like it's a, it's like a it's a team builder type thing. Anyway, it's a whole thing, and I think that the developers did a pretty good job with a lot of the stuff with them. Um, they're massively hindered by the fact that they are fundamentally gotcha games, though, and that you know makes things that comes with a lot of. Uh, shall we say, overhead that I'm not a huge fan of. But, um... And I'm not, I'm not playing any of those games at the moment. Uh, I'm, I'm getting my... you know, idle game fix in with a Steam game. I'm playing NGU Idol at the moment. Uh... The, uh... Literally at the moment, because it's an idle game, so... I'm currently playing it, even though I'm not playing it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do think that for a, I played like I. One of the things that's interesting is that I used to, when I was like in my early twenties, I used to play more phone games because the phones would have stuff like uh, like Sudoku built into them, and just like a very basic Sudoku. And it's like, oh, I don't know how Sudoku works. Here, let me learn Sudoku by just tinkering with it on my phone on public transport and stuff like that. Um, uh, but I don't do that much anymore because, like, I don't know. The the I feel like the phone games don't they don't have the um, the same kind of like, oh, this is a built-in, very simplistic game. Like your, uh, like if you remember, like Free Cell back from like the Windows ninety five era and stuff like that. Like those style of games are the kinds of games that I want to play on a phone. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like bringing almost anything on trips. Like I, I like to pack super, super light. So. Um, the, uh, uh, so, like, I, I, so, like, I, I'm very unlikely to bring, like, a console with me on a trip. 
part, part of it is like I get very anxious about it because now I have this expensive device with me and you know I have very severe ADHD it's very easy for me to forget things and in the context of like traveling like it's in, it's in theory less easy though I mean you know I almost left an expensive device just sitting at the place where you fill in the immigration forms on the counter and by almost I mean I literally did I went through immigration and then I realized that I didn't have the box and I was like oh shit and I literally had to like talk to the people at immigration and say I think I left this thing back there uh, and then they escorted me through crazy shit so it's not exactly a surprise that i don't bring expensive things uh when i go traveling but um the uh yeah for, for me like i i honestly just don't i don't like that many like portable games that much and I just kind of prefer to play in a nice, comfortable environment. And so, I, like, to me, I'm like, I'm just going to read a book. You know, I'll just read a book. I'm not going to worry about it. So, like, for mobile entertainment, and I think that is, pro part of it is probably just that, like, I wasn't really that into anything on the Game Boy. And, like, I, I didn't, like, I never really got super into um, any of the portable game consoles. So, like, when I was a kid, if I wanted, if I wanted, like, portable entertainment, the portable entertainment was a book. And so, now as an adult, um, I'd rather just, like, have my phone on me and just use it to read a book than, like, have a switch on me and, like, try to play, like, Smash Brothers or something on a plane. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah, I have to I have to leave the country quite regularly because you know I you know I go to visit my family who's on the opposite side of the world. <sighs> But I've also I also traveled a lot as a kid, um, because my family traveled a lot, and you're a kid, and you go where your family goes. But yeah, the funny thing is that I I don't think that I've actually played any gacha games except for the like AFK Arena and AFK Journey games, and I played those because they were recommended by Markiplier at some point. I was like, oh, actually, this is a, this is actually enjoyable. This is this is shocking. And, um, I played them both, and I, you know, I enjoyed them both, but I do think that, uh, I do think the second one I soured on faster than the first one because of a variety of issues, but... But the, um... Uh... But, yeah... So now we back to just reading books. The last time I was on a on a uh, oh my god oh man this is so bad. This is can I? I gotta be able to get you to do something. I'm just sit there, right? I should I should have saved when I cleared out the initial pack. This this was an insane pull to do. We we do not have that much time. Like in stream, it's like eleven forty-two. We have an hour fifteen. I guess I could save here. I could save this under danger if I wanted to. Let's see. Yeah, I I don't <laughs> I don't give I don't give money to uh, to like any game that is built on those kinds of uh, transactions. The, the the thing that's interesting to me and you know this is a little this is a little toxic of me, I will admit. The thing that I enjoyed about playing AFK Arena and playing AFK Journey is that I didn't have to feel bad in PvP and in competition 
for trying my best and trying my hardest because of the fact that I knew that the people that were ahead of me had just spent thousands of dollars to get ahead of me. And catching up to them and beating them in things feels really good because it's like the deck is stacked like so 